James is on Twitter. Dave, can you help me understand if this new tax bill is going to help or harm the middle class? Well, um, regardless of your politics, uh, I can tell you this. Think with me. Just, just use your brain. Pull your brain out of your politics for a second, people. Think with me. Who better handles money for the good of society? Individuals or the government? Companies or the government? Who is the most efficient user of money and thereby better for society? Individuals or the government? Companies or the government? Answer is never the government. Is society better off the less money government extracts from it? Answer, yes. So, regardless of the technical, tactical breakdowns of whether you personally will see a $942 change in your tax bill next year, 96% will, or whatever these analyses are you see coming out everywhere, uh, it appears most everybody's going to get a little bit back, a little bit different. Um, some more than others, um, you know. And, and a lot of people don't even pay taxes. You know that, right? Like 50% of the people in the United States don't pay any federal income tax. So you need to keep that in mind. I mean, it's like bizarre if you think about it. So it's nuts. Yeah. If, if you make a certain income, you get money from the government. You don't give money to the government. An unearned income tax credit. I mean, you get a you get taxes back and you didn't pay any in, you know, or more back than you paid in. One of the two. You get money out. I mean, your, your net effect is you get money out. You don't put money in. For most people, that's half the people listening or half the people in the world, in the U.S., that's what it is. So if you want to call a portion of those middle class, they're, they're not even going to change, except that the culture is always better off. The community is always better off. The nation is always better off when it has less taxes extracted from it. Now, some of you do not believe that the money will result in someone doing something with it in the marketplace, that everybody's just going to, that the rich just take their money and nobody benefits. Well, it is their money, by the way. But aside from that private property issue, uh, I'm wealthy. If I have more money, do you know what I do? You think I just put it all in the bank somewhere or hide it under my mattress? I mean, what do I do? Well, I buy stuff with it. And when I buy something with it, whoever made that thing gets paid. Whoever sells that thing gets paid. Whoever owns the store where that thing is sold gets paid. And then when they get money, so if I go across the street to a restaurant and I spend money, the server gets money, the cook gets money, the restaurant owner gets money. The restaurant manager gets money. The janitor that sweeps up the floor at the restaurant gets money. Because I'm a customer, it's more likely to continue, and there's more money going over there. So if they have more money, what do they do? Oh, they spend it. And where do they spend it? Oh, down at the hardware store. If the guy at the hardware store has more money because I spent money at the restaurant, and then the restaurant spends money at the hardware store, this is called monetary policy, for those of you that are uninitiated. It is called the flow of money. It's why we call money currency. You ever heard this called currency? Because it flows. It has a current to it. It is not a dead-end river. And money is not finite. There's not a fixed pie. Meaning if I get more, it means someone else got less. That's someone. Money is not like a pie. It's more like candles, Rabbi Lappin says. If I light your candle off of my candle, now we have two candles that are lit. That's how money works. It doesn't work where if I, you know, I light your candle, then mine goes out. You know, that's not, that's not how it works. So all of that to say, um, I, and I, you know, you can call it trickle-down economics. You can scream and flop your liberal self around on the floor if you want. Doesn't work. The rich just keep getting richer. Wealth inequality. Well, it has never, there's never been a culture in the history of the world. You can find no historical evidence anywhere 
that says that by extracting money from one class that the other class prospers. It's called socialism economically at its core, and socialism doesn't work. There's a, it's a failed experiment. Communism is more of a failed experiment. And so if you believe in communism and socialism, then, you know, you, you, that's an economic form of government, but it has a bad track record. And, and so it has to do with equalizing the inequality of wealth, except for the people who are running the place. And there's always the aristocracy that in even in the liberal mentality, the aristocracy ends up very, very rich. And so there's always this wealth inequality, even in a pure communistic setting. It's like everybody's going to be equal except for the bunch that put it together, you know. So that's really how it works. So be thinking about that. So the bottom line is, does the middle class, is it going to help or harm the middle class, the new tax bill? Well, the new tax bill in general puts more money into the economy and less money to the government. Anytime that happens, it's a good day. It's that much less money that they have to poorly manage was that kind horribly manage that much less money that they have to mess with and screw up and buy $25,000 hammers and $32,000 toilet seats yeah you know the stories and you've seen it too so the less money that we send up there to be inefficiently used is better for everyone everyone as a general macro statement Now, individually, you know, you can dissect the actual law itself and figure out who's going to get what tax cut, and then you can try to make some suppositions as to what might happen with that. But, you know, the question is, does does the economy grow more when government extracts money from the economy and increase taxes, or does the economy grow more when the government releases money into the economy instead of extracting it? It's kind of common sense. You don't have to be an economic genius to figure this out. Um, and it does work. It does work. Now, government has some things it does, but it doesn't do anything efficiently. It has some things it does that only it can do. But this idea that poor people are helped by government programs is a joke. <laughs> I mean, really? Seriously? I mean, look, <laughs> it's very, very inefficient. The millions of dollars it takes to get one dollar to a poor person is amazing. And and so, you know, I overall it's gonna help the middle class. It's gonna help the lower class, because it's gonna help society. It's gonna help the upper class too. And by the way, that's okay. It's okay. These people didn't rob anybody. They didn't steal anything. They just did more work and sold more stuff than you did. So they've got more than you got. That's how it works. Bill Gates has got more than I got. He sold more stuff than I have. He's helped more people than I have. So don't be mad at Bill Gates. He didn't do anything wrong. At least not for becoming wealthy. You don't want to be mad at him. He, he just sold a bunch of computers, like a whole bunch of them, like changed the world. You know, don't be mad. Don't be mad at him. You know, rich people are not evil people. They just serve at a different level. Now, there's a few of them are evil, but there's a few poor people are evil, too. And a few of you are too stupid to be believed. You got your head stuck so far up your politics, you quit thinking about these things clearly. Yeah, it's a disease that's out there. So that's the answer. It's kind of a philosophical economic answer rather than a specific technical one. Can you help me understand if this new tax bill is going to help or harm the middle class? Think I sufficiently described it? It's going to help everyone. Lower taxes always does. This is the Dave Ramsey Show.